Welcome to the Kenosha Harbor for the 2016 Northwoods League Home Run Derby, which is sure to be an exciting event here at the Kenosha Harbor. Hi everybody, Robert Sherman here for the Northwoods League Network, and this is the midpoint in the season. We're at the All-Star break, but before we have the main event, the All-Star game, one day before we give you one of the fan favorites, the Home Run Derby, with a little bit of a twist. Instead of, this, instead of in previous years where the Home Run Derby has been held at the home team stadium, this year it's being held at the Kenosha Harbor. Players will be sitting on the end of a pier hitting home runs into Lake Michigan, and it should be a spectacle unlike any other of its kind. Not only should it be a unique event, but it should be an exciting one for the talent that is going to be on display. It's going to be an addition of the North Division facing off against the South Division, and both of these sides definitely have players with the capability to hit the long ball very, very far. And the North Division, they come into this one as a slight favorite with the way that their representatives have collectively hit more home runs. The representatives for the North Division have hit 61 as a group coming into today's events. For the South Division, only 47. Players highlighting the North Division will be guys such as Dalton Varsho from the Eau Claire Express, who we have never had here in Kenosha before. He is tied for the lead league in the Northwoods League when it comes to home runs. He has nine of them this year. Additionally, you look at a few other players, guys such as Mankato Moondogs' Jake Shepsky. Shepsky has hit nine home runs coming into this season, and the Mankato Moondogs, throughout history of this event, have been one of the favorites. They have collectively put together a fair number of winners in this contest, and they've got one of the favorites coming into today's event again. Additionally, you go down the line a little bit more. Adam McGinnis from the Waterloo Bucks. He is third in the Northwoods League with home runs this year. He has eight of them. He's another favorite here today to potentially win this type of event. On the south side, you also have some pretty talented players. Look no further than the leader in the South Division in home runs, Daniel Jipping from the Battle Creek Bombers. He has eight home runs so far this year. He comes into this event as one of the favorites in order to win the South Division. Players as well, such as Matt Johnson from the Lakeshore Chinooks, who is one of two players coming to today's event that actually had a home run in their own game last night. He is another favorite from the Chinooks who has seen a lot of experience hitting home runs down here in this part of the state of Wisconsin. He'll have a little bit of an advantage coming to today's game. And then of course, one of the hometown kids the lone representative for the Kenosha Kingfish, Marty Bikina, who actually got to test the facilities here at the harbor a couple of days ago. He'll be another player that many are expecting to have a nice day here at the harbor. It's going to be a fascinating event. It's going to be a unique event, and it's going to be live coming up right after this. This is the Home Run Derby here on the Northwoods League Network. Each step of the way, you'll find is a great experience. It's hard to believe that someday you'll play in the big leagues. Do everything in your power. Every bit of ability that God's given you, make sure that you use it and make sure that you take advantage. Of it. That's why baseball is such a great teacher. The Northwoods League plays more games, offers a friendlier ballpark experience and draws more fans than any league of its kind in America. The best players in baseball are Northwoods League alumni. 2013 Major League Baseball Cy Young Award winner Max Scherzer is one of them. Visit a Northwoods League ballpark, watch a game, have fun, baseball as it was meant to be. Visit NorthwoodsLeague.com to find a team and ballpark near you. Stay connected and up-to-date on Northwoods League Baseball with the free Northwoods League mobile app. Avoid the lines and buy tickets to any of the Northwoods League games at any time, day or night. Subscribe and watch any game live from anywhere all season long. Get the latest news and stats from across the league and follow the best collegiate baseball players in America. Stay connected with the league or personalize it for your favorite team. Either way, we've got you covered. Available now free from the App Store and Google Play. Welcome back to the Northwoods League Network and the 2016 Home Run Derby at the Harbor of Kenosha. Robert Sherman back with you here for the Northwoods League Network this evening. We'll be joined from the guys from the Northwoods League studio in just a couple of minutes while we have a quick moment here before we get ready to roll. Let's take a look at the rules and go through exactly how every single player is going to be scored and the regulations that will apply to this event. 
The Home Run Derby format will go as follows. So it'll be a nine inning setup, one inning for each player for representing each division. Uh, the away team is gonna be the north and those players will be batting first in the top of the inning. The home team players will be the south. They'll be bot batting in the bottom half of the inning. Each player is gonna have one half inning to bat and they will have six outs in that half inning in order to take as many cuts as possible. Anything that does not go past the yellow lines that you see here at the harbor, anything that does not produce by definition a home run is considered an out. Each player will get six outs. The player that has the most home runs at the end of nine innings will be the home run derby at the harbor winner. And then there's also the team side of the event as well. The team, being the north or the south with the most home runs, will be announced as a winner of the team competition. Now let's take a look at the lineups here for this event. Should be very exciting. Some of the top sluggers from either division. Representing the North Division, we have Dalton Varsho, the sophomore at UW-Milwaukee, who comes in with nine home runs. Adam McGinnis from Western Illinois, eight home runs this season. From Southern Illinois University, it's Greg Lambert of the Wilmer Stingers, five home runs this season. One of the two representatives from the Thunder Bay Border Cats, Andrew Freejay from Sam Houston State University. He's hit five home runs this year. Representing the Mankato Moondogs, Jake Shepsky, a sophomore at Notre Dame, nine home runs to his name this year. That's tied for first in the Northwoods League as a whole. Ricky Ramirez is representing the St. Cloud, St. Cloud Rocks this evening. A junior from McNeese State, he has four home runs to his name. Griffin Conine, eight home runs this year. He's representing the lacrosse loggers. Alex Fitchett, the lone representative from the Rochester Honkers, junior at Hawaii, has belted seven home runs this year. Anthony Bracato, the other Thunder Bay Border Cat who will be in attendance for this event. The sophomore St. John's University has smashed six home runs this summer. Taking a look at the South Division, they will go as follows. Steve Passatempo will be the first hitter, hitting five home runs this year. The Wisconsin Woodchuck is hailing from the University of Massachusetts Lowell. Marty Bikina, the lone hometown Kenosha Kingfish and freshman of Michigan State. He is a three home run hitter this year, tied for the lowest number of home runs for a player entering this event with Laren Eustace. We'll get to him later. Daniel Jipping is from the Battle Creek Bombers, the sophomore at Central Michigan University, has smashed eight home runs this summer. The Madison Mallards have the junior from the University of North Carolina, Charlotte, Zach Jarrett, he'll be playing for them today. Laren Eustis, we mentioned him a little bit earlier, tied for the fewest number of home runs coming into this event, but still very dangerous all the same. The sophomore at Indiana University is representing the Green Bay Bullfrogs, three home runs to his name. Logan Maddox, six home runs. The sophomore from Georgia College is with the Wisconsin Rapids Rafters. Jonah Davis from Green Bay, freshman at the University of California, Berkeley, five home runs this year. And the final two hitters, Matt Johnson from South Dakota State, six home runs this season. He's the lone representative from the Lakeshore Chinooks. And then Connor Hetty from the Wisconsin Woodchucks, five home runs this year, the junior from the University of Kentucky. We're going to have the national anthem, so when we come back, we'll give you the festivities here at the harbor. Stay tuned for this. Catch all the action of America's premier summer collegiate baseball league at NorthwoodsLeague.com. Purchase tickets to a game near you. Get the latest news and stats on your favorite team, or watch live coverage of every game. Support your favorite team and the Northwoods League Foundation by visiting team and league stores. Find autographed memorabilia from the biggest stars in Northwoods League baseball, quality men's and women's apparel, and more. Visit NorthwoodsLeague.com, your instant source for everything Northwoods League baseball. Catch all the action of America's premier summer collegiate baseball league at NorthwoodsLeague.com. Purchase tickets to a game near you. Support your favorite team and the Northwoods League Foundation with gear and memorabilia from our online stores or watch live coverage of every game. Get the latest news and stats from across the league. Follow the best collegiate players in America on their journey to the championship and their place in Major League Baseball. Visit NorthwoodsLeague.com, your instant source for everything Northwoods League Baseball. Catch all the action of America's premier summer collegiate baseball league at NorthwoodsLeague.com. Support the Northwoods League Foundation with memorabilia from our store, get the latest news and stats on your favorite team, or join over one million fans at the ballpark. 
Just select your favorite team, find the game you want to see, then handpick your seats and print your tickets at home. For tickets 24 hours a day, visit NorthwoodsLeague.com, your instant source for everything Northwoods League baseball. So here we go, the 2016 Home Run Derby at the Kenosha Harbor, ready to get underway, and Dalton Varsho will be the first hitter today, representing the Eau Claire Express. Now, we here in Kenosha have never gotten to see this team, Eau Claire, before, but Dalton Varsho, one of those players that has been heralded, and we are all so excited to see his capabilities coming in this year. On the summer, he's been a 304 hitter, nine home runs, 36 RBIs. His home run total, is tied for first place in the entire Northwoods League. So he'll take his first pitch, and he'll lay off a couple of pitches right here. A sophomore at the UW-Milwaukee, and he had such a fantastic year there. Eight home runs this past season with a 381 average. A great career with the Panthers in general. Been a dominant hitter, 13 home runs in his entire career, and his first pitch is gonna be lined into the lake. That's gonna be the first out out of six. He's got five more to go. His second one will ricochet off of the pier and that one will be an out as well. He has four more to work with. Third one, that's driven to center field. That has a chance and is just short as well. Just not enough height on that one. Take another pitch right here. He'll have a couple of more opportunities, three outs to work with. Was named the Horizon League Player of the Year. And he drives one to deep center field. That one is way out of here. And he's on the board, his first home run of the day. He'll try again, make it two for two. He'll try to go opposite field. That one, a chance as well. It's flying, and that one is gone. Two home runs now for Dalton Varsho. Lines one foul down the third baseline. That's going to be his fourth out. Two home runs, two more outs to go. Here's the pitch, that one is driven deep to center, and that one will get out. Three home runs for Varsho. Another one, another drive deep to center again. This one is gone as well. Four home runs for Dalton Varsho. Another drive to center field, he keeps unloading, and that one, ooh, that one was close. Just a little bit short, he's got one more out. So let's see if he can make the most of it. He can keep going as long as he hits home runs, and he's gonna line that one straight into the water. So that will be his final out, and Dalton Varsho, his day is done. All six outs tallied, and they give him four home runs. So not a bad way to start the day off for the North Division. Dalton Varsho gets the Eau Claire Express squad. A little bit of recognition with those four home runs. And now we're gonna turn the card back over. We go now to the South Division. Steve Passatempo is going to be the leadoff man for the South Division. The freshman from UMass Lowell, a 330 hitter with five home runs and 33 RBIs this season. Now he comes into today's game riding a seven-game winning streak, and the Wisconsin Woodchucks are actually bringing two different players into this home run derby contest, not just Steve Passatempo, but also Connor Hetty, who will be the number nine hitter. And now he begins to take his pitches, laying off a couple. Now he started off the year, four of his five home runs were hit in the month of June. And he lines the first one right into the water. That's the first out. There's another one. That one hit off of the hilt of his bat, and that's going to fall short as well. Two outs now for Passatempo. Another pitch. There's a drive. That one has got a chance going right for the yacht in center, and that one is gone. First home run for Steve Passatempo. He gets the south on the board. The next one, he'll pop up straight into the air. That'll be his third out. Three to go. Rips the next one into Lake Michigan. That's four outs now. He'll also be in the All-Star game tomorrow. And here's a drive down the left field line. That one is hooking. If it's fair, it's gone. And that one is fair. That's a home run. That's two now for Passatempo. Rips the next one into the lake. Five outs here for Passatempo. He has one more out to work with. His adversary, Varsho, hit four home runs. So he's trying to equal that right here. Drives one deep to left. That one is going deep. That one is going out of here. Three home runs for Passatempo. One away from equaling Varsho's numbers. Had a great year with UMass Lowell. 
11 home runs on the year. Really has a lot of power in his swing. The next pitch, that's a drive. That one ties him with Varsho. Four now for Passatempo. Way out of here to left center field. Still one out left to work with. The next pitch, that one is hit high. That one is going deep. And that one is going way out into the harbor. That's gone. Five home runs for Passatempo. Now playing up in Wausau, most every woodchuck is gonna give a little bit of skepticism as the next pitch he sends, that one is popped up and that one is close. That one is just gonna fall short and that's gonna do it for Steve Passatempo. He finishes with five home runs today. Well, the point we were trying to get to was is that oftentimes the storyline that you see with a lot of these Wisconsin Woodchucks players, they play in such a small ballpark up in Athletic Park that it's difficult to get a full gauge on exactly how strong some of these hitters are. We had players last year such as Albie Weiss who was arguably the strongest hitter in the Northwoods League, hit 12 home runs last season. But all that being said, there is the added benefit of playing in a small park. Here today, apparently, the lines are supposed to be right around 3.30 down the lines and 3.30 to straightaway center. So it's a park that would be just a little bit bigger than Athletic Park. Not quite as big as Simmons Field here in Kenosha, which is traditionally considered one of the much more difficult ballparks to hit a home run out of. But all that being said though, that's now four home runs, now make it five for Steve Passatempo. And now coming into bat will be Adam McGinnis for the Waterloo Bucks. And now we have one of our guests from the Northwoods League Network, welcome aboard. Hey, what's going on, Robert? Not too much at all. We've already seen two batters go so far with the South Division currently leading five to four. This is McGinnis and he fouls his first one off. Adam McGinnis, the second batter now for the North Division. Eight home runs this year with the Waterloo Bucks. And he's one of those players that we've gotten to see here in Kenosha. Real strong swing, high slugging percentage at 526 coming into this event. He's been one of the league leaders. The, no. the nickname for him at the, at the studio is Paul Bunyan because he swings the axe so hard. <laughs> He's really shown off his capabilities to hit the ball hard. This one is driven to center field. This is a low line drive that's just gonna fall short. Two outs now for Adam McGinnis. The next pitch, that's popped up, three outs. Still seeking his first home run. He had a real strong outing back in June. A two home run performance against Wilmer. But after June 28th, which was the date of his last home runs, he has not hit a single home run up until this past week when he was able to belt two. The next pitch, that's lifted high, down the left field line. That one will flirt with the line, but it's not gonna get out. You'd hate to see him go out there and hit none. I mean, that's just like a real confidence destroyer. We saw a couple of players do that last season, and it is a big confidence destroyer. The next one, that one's gonna get out of here. And Adam McInnes with a statement home run, his first belt, and that was one of the longer ones we've seen so far this afternoon. And McInnes gets up on the board. Next pitch is lifted sky high. That's gonna fall just a little bit short from the looks of things, and it will. And that's going to finish up for Adam McGinnis. He totals one home run, so now the North Division and the South Division have moved into a 5-5 home run tie. Five home run tie. It's a little bit of a different setup than we've seen in most, ho in most home run derbies. Two different divisions competing against one another in addition to the individual it, prize. It really is. It's unlike the Major League show a major league home run derby whereas you know you just have guys go after each other in that tournament format a little bit different here and a lot to me it's a lot more entertaining when teams go up against it it's a little bit more competitive nature to it yeah this system was just put in place in 2014 in 2014 the north division won 18 to 13. last year they resumed with the same divi same system north division winning again 22 to 21 and now they just announced marty bikina's name the hometown kingfish will bat and he'll take his first pitch right there, but Marty Bikino off to a good year with the Kingfish. Three home runs this season, comes in tied for the lowest number of home runs for a player entering this competition. And he drives one straight away to center field. That one going to the deepest part of the yard. That one is just gonna fall shy. Not quite enough on that one for the freshman from Michigan State. Hit a little bit underneath it. 
wind keeps changing too. That's another thing to keep in mind. That one is a drive to another straightaway center field ball. This time it's gonna hit the yacht in center. Marty Bikina gets on the board and the South Division reclaims the lead six to five. Bikina will send a line drive to center field. That one falls short. That's another out here for Marty Bikina. Yeah, there's supposed to be well over 2,500 people here tonight, Robert. And they're looking for a show for Bikina right here. Marty Bikina, another drive. This one is close and just shy. Third out here for Bikina. This one lifted deep to left field. Going back for that yacht once again. And this one is gone. Two home runs for Marty Bikina. I would call it a wall scraper, but you know the rules. No walls here. <laughs> As the next one is lifted sky high, deep to left again, Marty Bikina back to back jacks. So the Kenosha Kingfish has now totaled three home runs, and he'll line one now down the line. This one a little bit lower. This one still gets out. Four for Marty Bikina. He's now tied for second with Dalton Varsha. Lifted to center field, another one that's got a chance. This one, gone. He's tied for the lead with five. Hometown heroes putting on a show. And the crowd willing him to victory. Here's number six for Bikina. This one, gone. Now he has the individual lead in the home run derby. That one lined to left field. That one's just gonna fall a little bit shy in the lake. And he was an underdog coming into this competition. No one was picking Marty Bikina to come out and do what he's doing right now. As most people were picking, Daniel Jipping, a guy with eight home runs of this competition. Dalton Varsho, nine of them. Another drive to center field. This one, that's close and just shy. That's now five outs for Marty Bikina. He's got one more to work with. And that's gonna end it right there. But Marty Bikina with a very respectable showing, six home runs, he's now sitting in first place. When you consider the guys that are on the list, Steve Pasatempo, Dalton Varsho, guys in the league that have a lot of raw power, and Marty Bikina, kind of a surprise candidate, comes out here and he actually puts on his show for the first round. Absolutely, and he's been one of those guys who's had a little bit of an up and down season, started very hot for the Kingfish, has been going a little bit slower as of late, but Marty Bikina wasn't slow in this competition today. Six home runs, he's now ahead of the pack as Greg Lambert will come to bat, another North Division guy from the Wilmer Stingers. Five home runs coming into today. He's got the, uh, he has the Noah Syndergaard hairdo. Just no nonsense guy. He's just gonna go up there, hack like he's a lumberjack and take it yard. I mean, he's Wilmer, a little bit under the radar kind of guy, but this guy can definitely swing it. Sophomore from Southern Illinois. His last home run came on June 26th against Lacrosse in his first pitch. He pops up, that's for an out. But that being said, though, he's one of those guys who's really made up for his home run shortage with a lot of RBIs, 42 of them in the last 46. But this is a day all about home runs. There's a drive down the left field line. That one is high, that one is deep, and that one is just shy by a foot. It's a little different setting. When you're normally used to playing on a baseball field and you come out here to Harbor, it's got to trickle out of these guys. This one a little bit short. Yes, falls short. That's now three outs here for Greg Lambert. He's looking to get on the board. Lines that one, that one won't do it either. A little bit shy. Now he was really the only one who was hitting home runs for Wilmer early in the year. Drive to left center field, this one has a chance. This one will get out. Greg Lambert gets on the board and now that's six total home runs for the North Division. Another pitch to Lambert, that one is low. 11 home runs currently for the South. Here's six for the North Division. High drive to left center field. That makes it seven. Seven home runs for the North Division, trying to pull even to their South Division adversaries. Rips one, that one will fall shy. In the first 24 games, he was the only player with Wilmer that had home runs, and he had four of them, so really nobody else was getting big flies for the Stingers, and that's gonna be a sixth out right there, a high fly. And now here comes the guy that everybody's been waiting to see, Daniel Jipping. A few years ago, actually, as a senior in high school, he competed in the Muscle Milk Home Run Derby with Ian Kinsler. He won that competition. He played at Wayne State, which is a Division II school in Detroit. And they have a, a, a field that's replicated like Fenway Park. And he was taking balls over and out on I-94. That's, that's absolutely fascinating. Daniel Jipping from the Battle Creek Bombers, the lone Battle Creek Bomber being represented here on this weekend, this season. He comes into this event with eight home runs. That's tied for third best 
in the entire Northwoods League. He has the highest home run mark in the South Division. And you look up and down both of these rosters, the North Division players, they come in with significantly more home runs near across the board. It's, it's a very, how should I say, it's a very hitter-friendly division in the North more so than it is the South. I mean, the South pitching is, I, I would have to say, it, it, phenomenal, as you know. 61 home runs for the North Division representatives, 47 for the South Division. That being said, though, in this home run derby, the past two years, the North Division has won both of these events, and Jipping swings and whiffs. So that's gonna be his first out. Jipping taking a lot of pitches, not seeing too much to hit here. Lines the next one right into the water, and it looked as though he got a little bit over anxious on that one, just trying to put a swing on something. There's a drive though, and that one's got a real shot of getting out of here. It's drifting backwards, and that's going into the kayak territory. Tons one home run. Power. Another drive, this one a little bit lower, and this one will fall short. Halfway there. He has not hit a home run since July 6th against Madison, but he had three home runs in that first week of June. There's the next pitch, and that's going to come a little bit short. Four outs now for Daniel Jipping. Drives one deep to left center. This one is drifting backwards, and this one is gone. Two home runs for Daniel Jipping. That one was deep. That one was real deep. Lays off one a bit outside. The South Division really coming out with a lot of firepower. You look up and down the lineups of both of these squads. Both Marty Bikina and Steve Passatempo have defeated their North Division adversaries as Jipping is going to pop that one out. And now Daniel Jipping with five outs, only two home runs here today. He's on track currently to tie Greg Lambert of Wilmer. One more and he'll out, and he'll out hit him. Well, Jipping still laying off a couple pitches here, being very selective. And he lines that one right into Lake Michigan. So we're a third of the way there. And Daniel Jipping pulls even with Greg Lambert, two home runs. That's now 13 home runs for the South Division. And they have the North Division currently beat 13 to seven to this point in the contest. I mean, it's really entertaining. You think about how many people are here. You think about you know the show that they're putting on. I mean, we have players that are almost hitting the boats out there in left center field and center field respectively. So kind of to describe the atmosphere, kind of reminds me of people watching the Blue Angels, if that makes sense. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, a lot of these guys, a lot of these home runs, these aren't necessarily just your run-of-the-mill home runs. A lot of these are really being demolished to center field, left field. The line has moved all days long from where home runs will be from a distance standpoint. Early in the day, the line was less than 300 feet out. They've moved it back, and they think it's about 370, 380, and that's a pretty respectable home run, especially with these clearing by about 60 feet. And you also got to keep in mind that the wind is always changing direction out here. It either is blowing in or it's got the crosswind, so it really isn't helping these players a lot at all, and to see them show their power here is really impressive. The wind definitely has an ability to have an effect here in Kenosha. Simmons Field has not been a very friendly park for home runs. And now here's Andrew Freejay from the Thunder Bay Border Cats, a ball club that's had a real tough season, but Freejay has been one of those bright spots. Five home runs, 19 RBIs this year. The freshman from Sam Houston State, and he had a great year with Sam Houston State. He rips the first one a little bit foul. It's fair, it's gone. He was ranked 11th nationally with triples, sends the next one into Lake Michigan. So he's one of those guys who has really been able to show off a lot of power, especially in his home conference where he was one of the conference leaders in so many different categories. Led the Southland Conference as the next pitch is swung on and driven to center field. And that one is going to clear the fence just by about 10 feet. <laughs> Next pitch, that one almost came inside and hit him, but he led the Southland Conference in triples with six, was third in home runs, he had seven of them, so he brings a lot of home run capability to the lone Canadian team. Being really patient right here, but can you really blame him after seeing the last two performances? I think patience is a virtue. And the next pitch he gets, he pops out. Now with rule regulations, you can get as many pitches as you want. There's no time limit like the major league system. It's just six outs, and so you can be as selective as you want to, and that definitely works your advantage. Next pitch is popped out. That'll be another out for Andrew Freejay. Misses inside. Now he's got another teammate uh, who's being represented here by the North Division. He rips one deep to left field. That's two home runs for Andrew Freejay. Comes back, he'll go back to back with another jack. Three home runs for Freejay. That one deep to left center. 
lifts the next one sky high to center field. That's the deepest part of that one is gonna fall shot. That's now five outs for Andrew Frije. Three home runs for him. And now currently he's sitting with the second highest mark for North hitters with the fourth best overall numbers today. His next pitch is gonna fall just shy. That'll be the sixth out for Andrew Frije, a respectable three home run performance. Next we got Zach Jarrett of Madison. Obviously, I mean, people are saying, oh, well, he plays at Madison, it's a short porch, but I mean, when he does hit the ball at Madison, it's almost going out of the ballpark. I mean, these are monster shots we're talking about, not just wall scrapers. So he has a lot of power. I'm gonna be excited to see this Mallard go. I mean, as you said, I mean, there's so much top-notch pitching talent in the South Division. Home runs are a little bit more at a premium for a lot of these guys, but Zach Jarrett, we actually just saw him against the Kingfish last night up in Warner Park, and Jarrett, he really does have the ability to take any pitch and drive it with power to any part of the yard. Even his F7s and F9s look like he really smokes the ball, and he'll get an opportunity to bat here. Coming in tied for 10th in the entire Northwoods League, six home runs. He'll be the fourth South Division batter to bat. Currently, the pace is being set by Kingfish Marty Bikina at six. His last home run came against July 5th against the Wisconsin Woodchucks. Drives one to right center field. That one just shy for the first out to Zach Jarrett. After hearing where the fences were, I thought there were gonna be a lot more home runs, but it, it's very, it's deeper than what people expected, and oh my, this is a moon shot. That ball smoked to deep center field, and Jarrett gets on the board, almost takes out the yacht in center. One home run for the junior from UNC Charlotte. Four of his six home runs came in the last two weeks of June, so went through a real power surge as he rips that one as an out short into the water. But a lot of these guys have gone through real trends where they've hit a lot of home runs and then have gone a little bit quiet. Rips one line, drive to left. That one sneaks over the fence, two home runs. And I think people are, are enjoying this. I mean, it's not like your regular home run derby. It's definitely got its own unique spin on it as that next one is gonna fall shy, that is an out. But you look at all these people from Kenosha here today, I mean, it's just a spectacle to behold. And nobody's really seen a home run derby like this one. No, and, not at all. And it's such a fantastic opportunity to have it here in Kenosha. There's a drive down the left field line. That one just tucks its way inside the pole. That's a home run for Jared, his third. And another thing to note, Robert, is you know the Northwoods League is the first and only collegiate summer league to hit balls into the water. So I think that's part of the spec spectacle too when you come out here and watch him play. Right back to left center field. That's been his nitro zone today. That's now four home runs for Zach Jarrett. Puts him at a tie for third with the highest total. Another drive, deep to let this one lower, and this one is just shy. Zach Jarrett, son of NASCAR Hall of Famer, Dale Jarrett. Athletic bloodlines. Some people want to say NASCAR is not a sport, but it definitely is. Oh, it absolutely is. And that's so unique that we've seen a few alumni of different sports here in this league. A lot of top notch players in all different sports, they're drawn to this summer collegiate league, especially Madison, as the next one falls shy. That's now five outs for Zach Jarrett. Came off a good year with UNC Charlotte. Four home runs to his name, seven the season before, now a 13 home run career. He brings a lot of power to the table. Smoke to center field. This one's got a chance. It's leaking at the last moment, and that's just shy. So a four home run day for Zach Jarrett, and another very respectable showing from a South Division player. So now the South Division leading the North Division, 17 to 10, and now I'm joined by Matt Micah. Yes. Welcome aboard. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. Oh, absolutely, and I mean, you've obviously gotten to see the first couple of participants, but such a real unique event with the way both of these two different divisions are going at it today, and we've seen some real bombs so far. Yeah, we really have, and the toughest thing, though, for these hitters is the release point from their pitching coach, because it's, it's, it's different on the diamond, and it's a different uh, environment as well, like you mentioned before, so picking up the baseball is the toughest, and then just driving it to the outfield. And not only that, but I was actually talking to one of the players before, and he's saying it's a little bit intimidating being how close you are to the water on both sides of this pier right here. He said that there's a guarantee somebody falls in today, so that's another 
another thing that players will have to watch out for, maintaining their balance, something you don't necessarily have to worry about in batting practice. Yeah, it's definitely enclosed and you feel that water on you, so it's definitely a different feel for these hitters. And But other than that, I mean, this is just a tr tremendous environment, just walking around, talking to fans. I, this is A+. Plus. I cannot believe this. Now to the plate is Jake Shepsky, and he'll bat one of the first left-handers that we've seen today, representing the Mankato Moondogs. The Moondogs have put the Home Run Derby champion on the board twice since 2008. And the first pitch he puts into the water, that one is going to be the first out for Shepsky. High school teammates with Kingfish Marty Bikina. Next one is lifted high. This one is going to be close, but it's just going to fall shy. Two outs here for Shepsky. And the Moon Dog lines one down the right field line. That one shy. Three outs for Shepsky. The sophomore from Notre Dame is tied for first in the league with home runs. That one is pulled down the first base line. Falls shy. Four outs. Tied for first in the Northwoods League. And that's kind of something interesting that we've seen. It doesn't matter how many home runs you've hit in the regular season. I mean, sometimes that really hasn't come into effect here in this event. Yeah, it is a different feel. Uh, we keep on harping on that, the different feel with that. But, you know, for this for this an event, like any home run derby participant, you just got to get hot early. Once you get hot early, you build that confidence, and you see the ball driving out towards over the fence, and then you can start racking up the home runs. Five outs now for Jake Shepsky. That one falling shy in right center field. Looking for his first home run. That one's driven down the first baseline. It's hooking, and it is gone. First home run for Shepsky. He gets on the board. Next one, he'll put right into Lake Michigan. So the six out for Jake Shepsky, and he's able to accumulate one home run. So right now, the South Division more or less running away with this one. Near across the board, South Division hitters have out hit their North Division foes. With the opposite I picked on, on the show, I picked the North Division. I looked top to bottom with Dalton Varsho and McGinnis. I thought top to bottom, these guys were going to all have consistent home run numbers, but I was completely wrong. I mean, it's not even necessarily who's going to win the entire event, but with the way that the system is set up, North Division versus South Division, it seems like there's a lot more depth in the North Division with a lot of those guys. You add up their total home run numbers, 61 for the North Division players, only 47 for the South. So once again, the North Division coming in as the favorites. They've won the first two installments of this edition of the Home Run Derby, but the South Division, they're putting together a pretty strong effort today. Very strong effort. And the, I just wanted to talk about a little bit about Martin Bikina. I mean, in front of these hometown fr uh, fans coming from Michigan State, Big Ten school, not getting a lot of love, but they had, he had a tremendous year. Michigan State had a tremendous year, and he put up six home runs. Just a tremendous effort by Bikina. And getting the opportunity to, as you said, perform in front of these fans, willed him to currently the lead with six home runs compared to anybody else. The highest is another South Division player, five for Steve Pass at Tempo. The first pitch here by Laren Eustis is going to fall shy. Sophomore from Indiana University came in tied with Marty Bikina with the fewest number of home runs for a player ending the competition with just three home runs. And he records his first two outs, that one a pop-up. Next one is driven to right field. This one is leaking, and this one is, that's gone. First home run for Laren Eustis, he's on the board. Puts the next one into the harbor though. So three outs, a little bit of a slow start here for Eustis, we'll see if he recovers. Puts the next one foul, hooks it a little bit too much. If that one is fair, it would have been gone. Heads up to the fans over there. Need a glove. Yeah, fans, exactly. fans, fans need a glove over there. You just see the entire extremities of this harbor just lined with Kenosha fans. Now the next one being put in the lake. Five outs here for Laren Eustis. That one will fall shy as well. One more out to work with. And as you said, if you could just get a rhythm going, if you can get a little bit of a string together, you could really do something spectacular, but that's going to be the sixth out. He pops out. So Laren Eustis hits one home run, the lowest total for any South Division player so far. But he pulls even with Jake Shepsky of Mankato, who was, I guess, his direct adversary in the fifth inning. So the South Division, they're still not doing any wrong right here. No, and it is Griffin Conine from lacrosse. He's been on an absolute tear as of late. He's been crushing the ball, driving the ball to the gaps, as well as hitting those power bombs. Um, so I'm very interested to see how Conine is going to perform in this event. A young hitter from Duke University with the lacrosse loggers. The only lacrosse logger being represented here in the north. And so different to see lacrosse now on the North Division side. There was a lot of talent that they had in the South Division last year in this home run derby. But now they're on the north. They're playing for the other opposition. 
No Rockford Rivets being represented in the South Division this year. Two Green Bay Bullfrogs have made their way in, Jonah Davis and Laren Eustace, but it's unfortunate that no Rivets made it in. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, you want every single team represented in, in one of these events. Um, I'm trying to think on top of my head who would be top guy. It would probably be Ricardo Ramirez, Ricardo Ramirez. or somebody like yeah, that. Yeah, Ricardo Ramirez. Who's had a nice season there, yeah, but in general, season. I mean, the Rivets Ball Club, not a team that's hit too many home runs. I think they only have hit 17 so far this year. Yep. So down the totem pole a little bit, compared to teams such as Madison, which as a ball club has hit 38 or 39, you would almost expect there to be more Mallards in this event. Yeah, you really would, especially with that short porch. I'm sure Jed mentioned about the short porch in Madison at the Duck Pond, just driving the ball out to, into the gaps, into the power lanes. But it, it, going back to Rockford, um, you kind of expect that with a new ball club, new team, getting a new rhythm, new fan base. There's a lot of excitement there. It's just building that chemistry, building that team to move forward, to get dubs and to get wins on the board and to pr produce numbers. So as we said, Griffin Conan will be coming up. Let's recap what we've seen so far. In the first inning, it was Dalton Varsho versus Steve Passatempo. Varsho picked up four homers, Passatempo five. Second inning, Adam McGinnis against Marty Bikina. The South came out on top again. Adam McGinnis, one lone home run. Marty Bikina currently pacing the pack, six home runs. Next inning, the third, Greg Lambert from the North Division hit two. He was even with Daniel Jipping from the South, also with two apiece. Now in the fourth inning, Andrew Freejay from Thunder Bay, he had three. Zach Jarrett had four for the Madison Mallards. He's currently sitting in a tie for third place overall. Fifth inning, Jake Shevsky and Laren Eustace both tied with one apiece. And then in this most recent inning, Ricky Ramirez, one home run for the North. And in the South, Logan Maddox, three. What's been your biggest surprise so far that you've seen if you look up and down those two lineups? Biggest surprise is actually Darren Volsharv. I expected Dalton Varsho to be around the eight, nine figure. Uh, happiest is definitely Marty Bikina performing in front of these hometown fans, but definitely Dalton Varsho. Um, but with Varsho, it's, it's, a, it's a tough position because you're coming out right off the gate, you're leaving the pack, and you're, you're the one that is setting the tone, essentially. So for him to come out and to get four home runs right away, I expected more, but it's also a tough position when you're first. Guys such as Dalton Varsho Sula with a very respectable performance. Currently in first place in the North Division when it's come to the home runs hit so far today. Again, he had four home runs in that first inning, but you look at what Dalton Varsho has done at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee has had such a great, impressive year with the Eau Claire Express these past couple of seasons. And he's somebody who we've never seen here in Kenosha. So very exciting to see a lot of this North Division talent. And that's what's such a great thing about this all-star break weekend it's really the one of the few times when the entire northwoods league gets brought together yeah you really can you can see all the talent spread across the entire league i remember on the pregame show we mentioned dalton varsho countless of times we called him superman spider-man the things he would be able to do in the field as well as the plate it was almost superhero-esque for him to do it's it's nice to see all this talent brought into one game one uh one break for for the fans to watch so much talent here in the Northwoods League this season. And again, you can catch the All-Star Game on the Northwoods League Network. That one will be tomorrow night and should be a spectacular showdown. Pretty much all of these players that we're seeing here in the Home Run Derby, with the exception of one or two, you'll see them tomorrow again in the All-Star Game. And personally, I'm really excited to see the All-Star Game this year. A lot of talent on both sides of the divisions. Last year, the South Division came up with the win, but who knows what's going to happen this year? It's, it's a flip of the coin, really. Every single year, it seems it goes teeter-totter, whether it's a pitching-dominant league or hitter-dominant league. This year, it's kind of a mix of both. And for, for this game, the All-Star game, I'm very excited to see who steps up, who performs well, whether that's on the mound, whether that's at the plate, in the field, who makes the clutch plays to get the victory. Now stepping in, this is going to be Griffin Conan here of the Lacrosse Loggers, tied for third place in the Northwoods League with home runs. He has eight, and he sends one right back to the screen for the first out for the Lacrosse Logger. Five more outs to work with. Lays off one a little bit high, and he's had a really impressive stretch. He's homered back on Friday and Saturday against the Eau Claire Express and the Lakeshore Chinook. So. Unlike a lot of players that are coming into this competition, he's seen a couple of home runs hit in his past couple of days of competition, and he's going to lead off right here with one out of here for the first home run for Conan. 
The next one he rips right into the lake. That'll be his first out. But again, patience that you're seeing from a lot of these players. The players that have not done as well so far are the ones that have been coming out hacking at the first couple of batting practice fastballs they've seen. There's no rush in this competition. You can see as many as you want or as few as you want. Yeah, no rush and Conine. That one's going right for the tall ship in right center field, high drive, and that is just shy. Will not quite get out of here. Another out for Griffin Conine. The freshman from Duke University didn't get much playing time with the Blue Devils in 2016. Did not hit a single home run, but what a transition it's been. Not much playing time, no home runs over in North Carolina. Now here in Wisconsin, one of the league leaders, eight of them. He'll try opposite field this time, and he's going to fall just shy. Third out. To center field. This one came off the hill to the bat just a little bit and didn't make the best of contact. Still good enough to put it out. I really like his swing. I like his swing. It's nice and fluid. Drives the ball. And there's a drive right there to right center. That one is going to get over the fence. Three home runs for Conine. His home run against Lakeshore the other night, it was a moonshot. He drove the ball. Traditionally, the ball has flown much better when it is lifted high here in Kenosha. It's been a little bit of a humid and hot summer, so the ball also has those added benefits of flying well in this area. But the wind has been, an a, been a factor. That one will go into the water to the left side. That'll be the sixth out for Griffith Conine. So his day will end with three home runs. So not a bad performance right there for Griffith Conine. He is now tied for second in the North Division with performances today with Andrew Frije, Dalton Varsho pacing the North Division. Now Zach Herrick joining us here on the show. Welcome. Thank you, Robert. Obviously, you know, I don't know if camera, the cameras really do justice of this atmosphere. I mean, the harbor, I talked to league, league co-founder Dick Raditz. He said the Kingfish came up with this idea and he said, I didn't think it would work. And he said I was dead wrong. It's amazing with the way that not just the Kingfish Leadership Group, but that entire big top right. organization that owns Madison, Wisconsin Rapids, Kenosha, and Green Bay, constantly reinventing the wheel here in this league. And this is what they've done here today. This is something that I've never seen anything like this before. I haven't either. And you know what? Coming in, I didn't really know what to expect. And now, I mean, my expectations were completely blown away. And, you know, also, I spoke to Dalton Varsho actually just minutes ago. And he said he has a he has a beef with the way right I guess right water you would normally call it right field but right water out there a little bit deep and uh, you know the pull hitters the left-handed pull hitters having difficulty hitting the ball out there we saw Shevsky usually powerful Varsho usually powerful they've struggled a little bit. Now, I know that the plan was to try and mimic Simmons Field as much as possible, right. but that being said, they've been moving the fence all day long. At one point, it was under 300 feet. They moved it over to 400 feet, and it's changed positions all day long. So far, we've seen a fair number of home runs with the current distance that it's at, but at the same time, as you said, those left-handed hitters seem to be at a little bit of a disadvantage trying to pull the ball to yes. right field. And, you know, a lot of people came into this saying, okay, you know, the buoys are only at 300 feet. There's going to be home run after home run. But, you know, these players are really out of their element. Being on a dock, I've, I heard a lot of them before the home run derby talking about how they're nervous. They're going to fall back and fall into the water and things like that. This is not a normal, you know, type of feel, obviously, on a dock. A lot of them aren't wearing cleats. A lot of them debated on wearing cleats or normal shoes. Now, that has given the advantage a little bit to the person who's pacing the entire pack right now, Marty Bikina. Right. He actually got to experiment with this setup a couple of days ago, and that was covered by the Kenosha Hears and the local papers and things such as that. But he is the only player who's really gotten the opportunity to see exactly what the setup is like, what he has to do in terms of getting the right balance, the right setup, putting the right swing right. on the ball to drive it to just a strong enough distance in order to get it far enough out here in Lake Michigan. So he was the guinea pig, and I guess it's worked out well. He's leading everybody right now. Six home runs. Yeah, and you know, only three three home runs on the season for him. And obviously you, as the, as the voice of the Kingfish, would know that he, he is powerful. And even though the numbers, not, maybe not, they don't show that, but you know, going in, everyone thought, okay, Daniel Jipping, Dalton Varsho. Daniel Jipping actually used to play in a home run derby. Um, actually, in Ian Kinsler's Muscle Milk Home Run Derby, he won that. But this is just so different. And I talked to him a little bit, and he just said, you know, th this is a lot different than a normal home run derby. 
And it really is. But Marty Bikina, I mean, you could tell he was comfortable. And I didn't actually know that he came out here a few days ago, but it really, it makes sense now. He said that he was really surprised at the way that the entire environment played, was really surprised he actually got invited right. to the Derby in general. As you said, those three home runs, but he has shown off the power this year, one of the league leaders in doubles. He hasn't put that many over the fence so far, but he's put six out so far today, and the hometown kid getting the hometown loving with the lead right now. Right, and I think a lot of people, you know, when they step up to the plate, they don't try to crush the ball, and Marty's one of those guys, one of those guys that'll hit for average, hit doubles, hit to the gaps. Not really a long ball hitter, but in a home run derby, obviously you can just swing for the fences. You aren't worried about hitting a gap or driving in a runner from second or something like that. So I think that really played into obviously his favor, being here uh, with the home crowd. You, you obviously heard the round of applause he got when he stepped in, and that definitely played to his advantage. Taking a look at the recap so far right now, we're midway through seven innings in this home run derby. The third year of this format, the North Division has won the first two editions of this home run derby, but right now the South Division making a statement. They've so far hit 21 home runs. They've sent six batters to the plate. The North Division, they've sent seven batters to the plate, and they've got 13 home runs right now. Right, I never expected this. I thought, you know, the North coming in with the big gaudy numbers and Dalton Bar show and guys like that and, and obviously Greg Lambert as well was a guy I was very high on. Griffin Conine hit three consecutive home runs from July 3rd to July 5th. I really like Conine. He actually hit a ball over the road in Eau Claire. They said that was the longest home run they've ever seen hit in that ballpark in Carson Park in about the past 10 years. So that says something. So I really like Griffin Conine, but you look at the South. I, I totally overlooked the South coming in. You know, obviously with Marty Bikini, we talked about him, only three run, three home runs coming in. Okay, it's nice for him to be here, but he came out and put on a show, as a lot of guys in the South did, and Steve Pasatempo obviously started with five, and really he was the guinea pig coming out here first, you know, and, and Marty Bikini was a few days ago, but there's just nothing like coming out here in front of thousands of people and being the first one to hit on a dock nonetheless. I mean, the one who has surprised me a little bit the most has been Daniel Jipping with the way he's only right. hit two home runs. He plays in Battle Creek, which is a really difficult right. ballpark to hit home yes. runs in. Former minor league park, they moved the fences in, but it's still pretty hard to hit yeah. home runs over there. But that being said, though, he hit the longest home run I've ever seen at Simmons Field. Hit it out of here by about 70, 80 feet, and still has had just the fifth best performance out of the South Division player. Two home runs, back from the pack just a little bit, but still all the same, still not too bad of a showing. Definitely not, and you know, Jipping, just one of those guys that will always have that raw power, and, and a guy that his draft stock, you know, over the ne next couple seasons, really skyrocketing, and that's what you like to see out of the Northwoods League, and these guys, they're getting experience, valuable experience, they're coming out here and competing, that's what this event is all about. And, you know, Dalton Varsho, a guy who next year could go in the top 10 rounds. Guy that's absolutely putting on a show in the Northwoods League. And, and you know, that's what this is about. It's about coming out here, seeing where you stack up against other guys. Obviously, it's great to get out in front of scouts. But the Home Run Derby, this is more, you know, about fun. Get out here and, and just see where you stack up. It is absolutely one of the things that's supposed to be a bit more casual, but at the same time, even in casual environments, it's like the unofficial interviews at job <laughs> interviews. Right. Somebody is always watching. Somebody's yep. already always getting an impression. And if one or two people see something pretty impressive here in an event like this, yeah. they'll throw that one in the back of their mind for down the road when it is draft day or something along those lines. And with some of the performance that we've seen so far today, there might be a few players that have creeped into the back of scouts' minds. Right, and you know what What I really think is, is really interesting about having this on the water is you have the water moving out in the background. Obviously, your eye's on the ball, but you don't see something like that in a normal field. You know, with, with the current coming out, you have the boats moving, things like that. I mean, that, that's very distracting on a hitter, and I think that's why you're not seeing the big, gaudy numbers that we really expected with just 300 feet. And plus, another thing is, there's no fence out there. It's just buoys. So, I mean, you could hit a ball 301, it's still going to clear the buoys. But in other parks, you know, with a 10-foot wall or whatever, you have to hit that ball that extra distance. And sometimes that gives you a little bit of psychological, right. I guess, pressure in order to hit that one just a little bit further. So now head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Jonah Davis will be the batter representing the Green Bay Bullfrogs. Top 20 in the league in home runs, five home runs this year. His first pitch, he rips into Lake Michigan. That's his first out. Just finished up his freshman year at UC Berkeley. 
And he was another one of those guys who, this is typical Northwoods League fashion, didn't play too much with the Golden Bears as he pops out for his second out, but now he's become a focal point of a Green Bay offense, which frankly has not been too spectacular this season, but he has certainly been a bright spot. And I think a lot of these college programs, you know, a lot of these guys come in and redshirt their first season. You know, Jake Shevsky, not a very big name at Notre Dame. This season hitting over 370. This one is driven out to right center field. This one will just fall shy of the Red Witch and the right center field wall. So now there are three outs. This one is going to flare just a tad shy. Four I, now. You know, and I think that's really the, you know, the way that college coaches see the Northwoods League. I can send a couple guys that have redshirted, maybe don't have all the experience in the world. They'll go out and they'll get in at bats against quality competition. That one is going to find the seat. If that one was fair, it would have been way gone. <laughs> but out of bounds. And really a lot of these pull hitters, a lot of these lefties, you know, with, with you know, Dalton Varsho, Jake Shevsky, we talked about it, the left-handed hitters are really at a disadvantage because, you know, right-handers, they can line the ball down, down that left field line, but the right field, I mean, you have a lot of fans over there. Davis trying to avoid elimination, five outs, make it six, and that will end his day. So that's the first player that we've seen that was unable to put up any home runs and it is on the side of the South Division, so that does give the North Division a little bit of an advantage. They get three back on the South in that seventh inning. Yeah, the North Division not going to go down without a fight, especially with Connor Hetty, the anchor of the North side. I mean, Connor Hetty is just one of those guys that has really surprised us this season. Obviously, five home runs this year. I really like Connor Hetty's game. He was one of those guys on the North Division that I, I saw as a dark horse because obviously you have Zach Jarrett, you have Steve Pasatempo, the guys that really stand out. But then you have guys like Connor Hetty and, and Marty McKenna, who maybe aren't the biggest names, but you're saying, okay, these are some guys with some power, and maybe they can put it together. That was what I was seeing was the big topic on Twitter a little bit yeah. earlier today, <laughs> the dark horse pick of Connor Hetty. And, I mean, it's very plausible at this point with the way that some of the bigger names have not dominated in the manner right. that we thought that they would. But we've got four batters left to see on the side of the North Division. Alex Fitchett from Rochester, Anthony Percato from Thunder Bay, and on the other side for the South Division, Matt Johnson from Lakeshore, who was one of the guys who I was actually picking to have a nice performance today, and Connor Hetty left. So is Connor Hetty your guy going forward through those last four that of players that you see excelling the rest of the way? Yeah, I, I really think so. I mean, Hetty's one of those guys that really has that smooth swing, doesn't always swing for the fences like we talked about with Bikina. Not a guy that has that big, big home run stroke. But, I mean, obviously in the home run derby, you have to have that power, and he does. Um, coming in, I saw Daniel Jipping really having a great day. We talked about him a little bit earlier, but he just couldn't really put it together. And, you know, you kind of knew he was out of his comfort zone when he saw the first four pitches come in, didn't swing at any. You kind of wondered what was going on there. Swung and missed at his first one. That has to make you feel, you know, a little bit questionable at the home run derby. But I think if Connor Hetty can come in, maybe see a pitch or two, start driving them. Matt Johnson will be the next South Division batter. The next overall battle we'll see is Alex Fitcher from the Rochester Honkers. The lone honker being represented here today and the lone honker that's going to get to see time in the All-Star game right. as well. Uh, but on the other side of the coin, there's also the next Thunder Bay hitter, Anthony Bricado, who's somebody who I'm really excited to see. Do, we do not have a small, we do not have a very large sample size right. on what he is capable of, but what we've seen so far, some serious power. Yeah, you know, it, really a bright spot on, on two clubs that have really disappointed this season in the North Division. You know, Rochester and Thunder Bay, a lot of people were excited about the Honkers crew coming in. Um, but, but Fitchett has really, he's really come into his own over the past month. I mean, started out a little bit slow in Rochester, but over the past few weeks, I mean, the kid's just been on an absolute tear. And you talk to Rochester's manager, absolutely loves having Fitchett in the clubhouse. Any guy that you want to interview, go for number five. Go for Fitchett because Fitchett's, Fitchett's that guy that kind of a clown in the clubhouse, one of those guys that just keeps everybody loose. And, you know, when you're not having the best season, that's a guy you really need. And he produces on the field as well. 
and I really think he's a guy that could have a pretty good showing here today. He's had a really strong year with the Rochester Honkers, a total of seven home runs. That ties up for six in the entire Northwoods League, right. and that's been one of the interesting things as well. When, you, when the players that were announced for the home run derby came out, you saw some guys that were way at the upper echelon of yeah. really talented power hitters, yeah. but then you also saw guys who you were surprised even made the home run derby in the first place. Players such as Laren Eustis only had three home runs right. coming into today. Marty Bikino, who I guess we're really glad that he did get invited <laughs> to the home run derby, but he only had three home runs coming into this contest as well. And then on the other side, you had a couple of other players, I mean, uh, who only had four or five home runs. There were some players that had more home runs that were left out, which was a little bit right. of a surprise. Right, it really was. And you know, the, the, the teams that don't have a whole lot of power, Green Bay, you know, Laren Eustis, he's actually kind of led the way for Green Bay this season. Eustis has been, uh, you know, not the most powerful guy, but at the same time, you like to see those guys get rewarded that maybe don't hit the home runs, come out here and see where they stack up against guys like Dalton Varsho and really the, the king home run leaders of the league because at the end of the day, every team gets represented and you really like to see guys like Laren Eustis get a chance. We've gotten to see a lot of home runs so far today. Let's take a look at where we stand right now to the first seven innings of South Division. Even with that zero spot put up by Jonah Davis in the bottom of the seventh, still with a fairly sizable advantage. They lead the North Division right now 21 to 15. And if the South Division is able to hang on, this will be the first time that the South Division will win this head-to-head -head competition. Yeah. The North Division has won the first two installments. And I really expected the North Division to come out here and, and really dominate this. Even Adam McGinnis, you know, he, he batted in the second inning. I really like his game. He's like a lumberjack, you know, like Paul Bunyan. Absolute, just brutal strength at the catching position for Waterloo. But... He just didn't seem to be able to put that together. You only get six outs, so you really have to pick your, I guess, you know, a lot of people don't understand, a lot of it is stamina too. Because, you know, you're putting all of your brute might and strength into every single swing. You can't swing six straight times. I mean, you're gonna have to take some pitches. That's the way it is. I mean, you absolutely have to save a little bit in the reserve. Right. At the same time though, there is no second round, there is no third round, right. there's only one round, so you can have free will in order to lay it all on the line in one inning and you're one at bat stand. But that being said as well, there is still, it's kind of like the concept of sprinting versus a marathon. Right, exactly. And you really do want to have a marathon to get your full six outs and not feel very right. cheated. But at the same time, you do get to lay it all out there in one go. Yeah, and with, with six outs, you know, we go back to Daniel Jipping again. Jipping, you know, swung and missed at his first one, but he took a, the first few pitches. And that's just part of, you know, being aware of your surroundings, starting to gather some stamina, and just, you know, get ready to put all of your might into all of your swings. So we're going to step away for a quick, quick break now. When we come back, we'll have the final four batters of the 2016 Northwoods League Home Run Derby. This is the Northwoods League Network. We'll be right back. Each step of the way you'll find is a great experience. It's hard to believe that someday you'll play in the big leagues. Do everything in your power. Every bit of ability that God's given you, make sure that you use it and make sure that you take advantage of it. That's why baseball is such a great teacher. Stay connected and up to date on Northwoods League Baseball with the free Northwoods League mobile app. Void the lines and buy tickets to any of the Northwoods League games at any time, day or night. Subscribe and watch any game live from anywhere all season long. Get the latest news and stats from across the league and follow the best collegiate baseball players in America. Stay connected with the league or personalize it for your favorite team. Either way, we've got you covered. Available now free from the App Store and Google Play. The Northwoods League Foundation is enriching the quality of life for families with an enduring and caring focus on the communities it serves. Through special events, subscription services, direct donations, and the sale of autographed memorabilia, the Northwoods League Foundation is harnessing a unique passion for summer collegiate baseball and investing in its communities so everyone benefits from the wide-ranging experience offered by the great game of baseball. Visit northwoodsleague.com foundation and share your passion for the game we love. And now welcome back to the Northwoods League Network. Robert Sherman alongside me, Jed Schilling. And 
Now we head to the top of the eighth inning. Through seven innings, the Northwoods League South Division, they've hit 21 home runs. The North Division, 15 home runs. And it's going to be Alex Fitchett representing the Rochester Honkers who will bat. And Fitchett comes in, tied for six in the Northwoods League, seven home runs this year. A junior from Hawaii. And he doesn't play in the smallest of ballparks either. I mean, you, you go to Mayo Field and you just step out on home plate and you realize how long it is to left and right, down the left and right field lines. He's not the first Hawaii slugger that the Rochester Honkers have had. Rochester Honker for 2012, Trevor Podrats won this event in 2012. And so we'll see if Alex Fitchett is able to live up the legacy of Podrats. Since then, last year, Rochester, another winner, Joe DeRose Ruffin from the University of Connecticut was able to come away with the victory. So a lot of Rochester Honkers have done well in this event. The first pitch by Alex Fitchett, it's put into the water for out number one. His last home run came July 14th against Kalamazoo. So he hit one a little bit over a week and a half ago. So we have not really seen him hit too many home runs as of late, but trying to get back into the swing of things. Next pitch, he fouls off into the water. That's his second out. And he's been really the backbone behind that offense in Rochester all year long. He, they've been really been dependent on him to get runs across the plate. It's been a tough year for the Honkers. They've been sitting in the bottom echelon of the North Division, but he has definitely been one of the bright spots. And he turns on one, sends it to left field, and puts it out. He's on the board, his first home run. And the North Division trying to climb back in. Now they trail by five home runs. So next pitch has popped out. That's now three outs. With Fitchett and Bricado still up, though, Robert, Robert, you still got to imagine that there's still room to come back into this thing. Especially with Anthony Bricado, who will be up next, a guy who I personally am really excited to see. Six home runs in 23 games, but Alex Fitchett as well has had a really nice stretch in the last month. That's when he's hit five of his seven home runs this year. He pops out for another out that's now four. I think the biggest thing is, is adjusting because this isn't like your typical home run derby. There's a huge backdrop difference. I mean, you're going out where you normally have a, a green backdrop or a batter's eye. Drills one out of here for his second home run. That now gives him two home runs and the North trying to climb their way back in. And he's being very patient at the plate. A lot of these batting practice fastballs missing high, missing inside. He's looking for those ones over the heart of the plate, elevated a little bit. And you see what happens right there as he falls just a little bit short for his fifth out, just shy of his third home run. And it's really surprising how close this competition is. Everybody thought that the South was just gonna run away with it. And Daniel Jipping was just gonna put on a show, but it's actually, you know, talking about five home runs, that's not a, a very big margin. And the guys who've been putting up the home runs too have been a bit of a surprise as well as the next pitch is gonna be pop shy. That's the sixth out now for Alex Fitchett. And his day will finish him up with two home runs. I'm really excited for this next guy, Robert. I mean, Matt Johnson of Lakeshore. Uh, there's been a few times this year that I've, I've watched Lakeshore battle it out and, and he's hit the scoreboard out there at Capco Park. So. Lots of raw power with this young fella. Um, knowing how, I mean, these are short porches, so he'll, he'll, I wouldn't be surprised if he put out seven, eight home runs right here. So we're gonna step away, and when we come back, we'll see Matt Johnson from the Lakeshore Chinooks up to bat in the bottom of the eighth. Stay tuned. Welcome back here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Matt Johnson will now bat, representing the Lakeshore Chinooks. It's the South Division 21, the North Division 17, and Matt Johnson trying to pad the South Division lead. The junior from South Dakota State, top 10 in the Northwoods League, six home runs this season, and only one of two competitors that actually went yard in last night's game. The first pitch, he'll send sky high to right field, and that's gonna come up just shy for the first out. Really interesting, he's kind of got the advantage here being a lefty, he can link, yank it down that right field line. We have not seen too many lefties be able to take advantage of the distance down the right field line so far today. Right-handers have had a little bit more of an advantage. The next one sent to straightaway center, slicing and it's gone. First home run for Matt Johnson and he'll inch the South Division lead out just a little bit more. They now have 22. Biggest thing for Johnson is just to stay within himself. That one is a towering drive down the right field line. And that one is just shy. Unable to sneak its way out. The wind's 
very, it's calm, but it's still blowing in a little bit, keeping that ball up in the air. That one down the line again, this one hooking just ever so slightly. It stays fair, tucked it in, side that line, and he's gonna put it out for his second home run. So Matt Johnson with two home runs with the Lakeshore Chinooks just about an hour away from here in Kenosha. So used to the typical weather here in Southern Wisconsin. The next one, that one is launched and just a little bit shy, unable to sneak it over. And the Northwoods League, Robert, has been known to get these kids from the smaller Division I schools, and they, they come here and they put on a show. I mean, you're looking at Johnson right now, shooting off an impressive pull power down the right field line. A South Dakota State kid, and he will send a, another out to straightaway center. So now that's four outs for Matt Johnson. And he went on a real power struggle through the, through the middle of the season. He was really hot to begin the year, but from June 25th, until last night, he had not hit a single home run, but getting that home run last night, that might do wonders for his confidence and get him back onto a bit of a home run stretch because he was unable to pull one out for a good amount of time. But that's what it seems as though the home run derby and just the season in general for home runs can all be about. When you get momentum, when you get a stretch together and you can put them out in succession, that's been typically the way that home runs have come in this league. This one is sent to right center. This one is out for the third home run for Matt Johnson. And you mentioned gaining momentum. We saw Marty Vakina, uh, Kenosha's very own, come out and put four or five home runs together. He went on a really nice, impressive stretch, and I think that's what a lot of people should take after Bikina. When you can put the stretch together and when you can get those home runs in succession, that's when you'll typically find success. And sometimes, especially with all these pitches that are being taken, it can be difficult to gain momentum. You have to swing at successive pitches, but at the same time, you only have six outs, so you want to stress the quality of pitches you see that you take rips on. Here's the pitch. That one, a little bit out in front of, and he'll put that one into the water, and that will finish it off for Matt Johnson. Three home runs. Able to outdo his adversary, Alex Fitchett, by one. So now through eight innings, the South Division has 24 home runs. The North Division has 17. It's going to be up to Anthony. Remember, we've got fireworks coming up after the home run derby. Before we get into the ninth inning, I want to direct your attention to the plate here. Kingfish employee Zach Palisar is making his way out. Now all you athletes, some of these guys play Major League Baseball that are here tonight. Some have played professionally somewhere along the way. They're here at the All-Star Game. They're All-Stars in the Best Summer Collegiate Baseball League. Now hold on, Zach, wave to everybody. Listen to what Zach said. Zach Palisar, the Kingfish office said, that doesn't look that hard. I can hit one out. And he said that in front of a bunch of players. The players said, why don't you put your money where your mouth is? Zach said, fine, here's what will happen. If I don't hit one out on the first good swing I take, I will swim from home plate to the right field foul pole. That's what he said. What if he's just going, what if he's swinging like that? He goes, so there's a lot of pressure here. They called him on it. And now Zach in his boat shoes, has to swim. <laughs> hold on, Zach, hold on. Hold on. I, was, I distracted you, I distracted you. Cut the music, Bucky, cut the music. All right, I think we need the whole harbor to chant for Zach here, okay? Let's, Zach, 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 Zach. If this were the 80 Olympics, Al Michaels would have asked if we believed in
and miracles. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. After eight innings, our score, the South Division 24, the North Division 17. We move into the ninth inning. Yeah, good. Let's get Zach some help here. Give Zach a round of applause. I, nobody can believe he hit it out, I don't think. Seriously, everybody on the staff was laughing like, ha, 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 Zach's going to get wet, ha, ha, ha. Maybe the whole staff needs to go swim out for it. I don't know. Welcome back to the 2016 Northwoods right, League home run derby at the Harbor. Robert Sherman here, Jed Schilling with the Northwoods League Network. And we head to the ninth inning now with the South Division currently leading 24 to 17 over the North Division. And the final North Division batter now coming to the plate, Anthony Bricado from Thunder Bay. And this is someone who I was really excited to see coming in. The first pitch he launches sky high. And that one is going to fall short for one out. But Brocato, an interesting story. Not even enough bats to qualify for the batting league title. He's only played in 23 games, but he's top 10 in the Northwoods League. Six home runs with that Border Cats club. It's really impressive considering, you know, Thunder Bay is kind of one of the, the teams in the division that no one, in the North Division, that no one really gets a chance to look at. But it's really impressive when you look at his stats on paper. Rips that one right into the water. He had a stretch where he had five home runs from June 27th through July 3rd. Just a monstrous tear for Anthony Bricado. Only one home run since then. His last one coming July 10th against the Wisconsin Woodchucks. But a really spectacular start to his year. Pops the next one up. That'll be his third out. So Bricado is the South Division's last chance in order to try and come back from the deficit that they have right now. Currently down now seven total home runs. It's a 24 to 17 contest right now. Right now, Marty Pekina from the hometown Kadosha Kingfish paces everybody. Six home runs hit today. I'm really surprising because no one picked Bikina to do what he did tonight. I, well, maybe you did, but I know a lot of people were, he wasn't really supposed to do anything. He was supposed to just be a participant in it, and it really surprised a lot of people. And that one is ripped to left center field. That one is low, but that one carries over the fence, and that's one home run for Anthony Bricado. And now it's all about gaining momentum and putting together a stretch. Let's see if Bricado is able to build on that home run. These next couple of pitches, though, have been missing high. He's looking from a bit more down. That one a little bit up and in, and he turns on it, sends it high. This one has a chance. This one is gone. Two home runs. Wynn got a hold of that one. He just got it up high enough to take it over the left field fence. Especially here in Kenosha, once you get to a certain elevation, the ball really has the ability to carry, but you have to get it to that certain level of elevation. Typically, with the wind here coming off of Lake Michigan, this is a difficult play to hit, to hit home runs. Brocato now with two home runs to his name. Also, I have to keep in mind that usually they're looking at a batter's eye out in center field, and when it's all white and blends with the ball, it's really hard to pick up. It's another out for Anthony Brocato, and that will do it for his day. That gives him two. So a two home run performance for Brocato, and that gives the North Division 19 home runs, so it's already guaranteed that the South Division is gonna come out top in this competition the first time since this new system for the Home Run Derby, which began in 2014 over in Lakeshore. This will be the first time that the South Division is gonna come away with a championship. So there's only th one thing left to be decided, and that's the overall winner. And we'll find that out after the break. If Marty Bikina's six home runs will stand, you're watching the Northwoods League Network. We'll be back. Come out and join us July 19th as we celebrate the top talent from the world's largest organized baseball league. The Northwoods League All-Star Game brings together the best of the best among elite college players to play in front of Major League Scouts, and you can see it all right here. Coverage begins at 6.50 p.m. July 19th and live from Simmons Field in Kenosha, Wisconsin. For more information or to see it live at the stadium, visit NorthwoodsLeague.com. Bottom of the ninth inning, and now it's going to be the last competitor. Connor Hetty will be batting for 
the Wisconsin Woodchucks, the lone man from Wausau who will get an opportunity today at the Home Run Derby with the South Division currently leading 24 to 19. They've already guaranteed the team victory. And now the first one here sent out to right field is gonna fall shy for Connor Hetty. So now the only thing left to be decided as Hetty flies out for his second out is whether Marty Bikina's six home runs will stand. Right now he has the lead over everybody. That's been the highest total hit so far, the hometown kid here from this Kenosha Kingfish Club who it seemed as though was given the honor of participating more so, I guess, out of honor from the fact that Kenosha was hosting the event and it was just appropriate to have one Kingfish participating. I'm not sure if anybody expected Marty Bikina to come out today and perform the way that he has. Hetty lines out for his third. Right, and obviously you've seen him all year long. Bikina's power is more in game. He's not you know, he's not a batting practice hero like like mo like some of these home run derby players in this contest. But you know, Hetty here saw him take batting practice over at Simmons Field earlier today. He's putting him out at Simmons Field, so we'll see what he does here. The second year man with the Woodchucks pops out. That's gonna be his fourth out today. Just finish up his junior year at the University of Kentucky. And this Wisconsin Woodchuck, another guy in the top 20 in the Northwoods League of home runs. He's got five of them. He sends one to left field. This one is dying, and it just falls shy. That's now five outs for Connor Hetty. He's still looking for his first home run. And barring miracle, Marty Bikina is going to be the 2016 home run derby champion. But still one more out for Connor Hetty to work with. We'll see if he's able to pull out a miraculous comeback. I'm really still surprised at how many people are still here, Robert. I mean, we, we I think the expectation was there's gonna be a lot of people, but this many people is quite impressive. But not this many at all. As the next pitch is sent sky high, it's gonna fall shy. That's gonna end the day for Connor Hetty. He's unable to put up any home runs, but that will conclude the event. It's 24 home runs sent for the South Division, and then for the North Division, 19 total. So the South Division has won their first home run derby with the new format. They win this one 24 to 19, and the hometown kid from the Kenosha Kingfish, it's Marty Bikino who will take the individual crown, able to belt six home runs today. Really crazy to think about two players on the south side came up with no home runs and were still able to make it out alive and win the competition overall. Yeah, that is actually, I didn't even notice that, but yes, two South Division players unable to hit any home runs. It seemed as though that the early goes for the North Division is what did the men. Aside from Dalton Varsho, batters two through six between Adam McGinnis all the way down through Ricky Ramirez. None of them really able to put up a strong showing. The only one who was really able to have a nice outing was Andrew Freejay in that list with three home runs. But everybody else seemed as though that they didn't live up to some of the expectations put out for them. Right, and I think the biggest thing here, Robert, is, is the backdrop. I mean, most of these players play against the batter's eye. They don't have this type of environment around them, and they're hitting balls into the water. I mean, they're, just, they're throwing a new environment out in front of them. They're not really used to it, but overall, the product on the in the water, I should say, was really good. It seemed as though that it was a really fantastic event with just not only the design of it, but with the way that it seemed as though that it was a pretty entertaining opportunity for a lot of fans to come out to see. And it is the first home run derby win for the South Division. And Marty Bikina, the underdog, comes away with the win. We're going to step away. When we come back, we'll wrap up after this. Stay connected and up-to-date on Northwoods League Baseball with the free Northwoods League mobile app. Void the lines and buy tickets to any of the Northwoods League games at any time, day or night. Subscribe and watch any game live from anywhere all season long. Get the latest news and stats from across the league and follow the best collegiate baseball players in America. Stay connected with the league or personalize it for your favorite team. Either way, we've got you covered. Available now free from the App Store and Google Play. The Northwoods League plays more games, offers a friendlier ballpark experience, and draws more fans than any league of its kind in America. The best players in baseball are Northwoods League alumni. 2013 Major League Baseball Cy Young Award winner Max Scherzer is one of them. Visit a Northwoods League ballpark, watch a game, have fun, baseball as it was meant to be. Visit NorthwoodsLeague.com to find a team and ballpark near you. Welcome to the post home run derby wrap up here on the Northwoods League Network. Robert Sherman back with you. What a spectacular event it was here today. 
really the first of its kind that we've seen here in the Northwoods League with this event being held here at the Kenosha Harbor. But tonight it was the hometown Kenosha Kingfish player, Marty Bikino, who comes out with the win. Not as many home runs as we expected seeing from the winner, but Marty Bikino able to belt a very respectable and ultimately title-worthy six home runs in today's action. He takes the Northwoods League home run dirty title away here in the 2016 season. A fair number of home runs for both sides. For the South Division, they finally have won their first ever installment of this new version of the Home Run Derby. They hit 24 home runs, and for the North Division, they were only able to hit 19. This is the third time that this system has come in place with a nine inning setup for a Home Run Derby, and it was really exciting to see not just the pageantry between the North Division and the South Division, but still that individual tenacity and the, I guess, the objectivity and the willingness to try and do the best personal job that each player can do and tonight that player was Marty Bikina perhaps he was willed by the hometown crowd that was here today as we had a huge turnout here at the harbor tonight and Marty Bikina was able to use that to his advantage in order to propel him to victory he was able to get on a stretch where he hit three or four consecutive home runs and that was really what was able to propel him to that six home run total in second place was Steve Passatempo from the South Division, representing the Wisconsin Woodchucks. He had a total of five home runs hit in this contest. Tied for third place, four home runs. South Division hitter Zach Jarrett from the Madison Mallards, and then the best hitter from the North Division, Dalton Varsho. He hit four home runs today. And a lot of people were picking guys like Dalton Varsho and Daniel Jipping to come away with the win today, but we really did see the true underdog come out on top today. Marty Bikina had only hit three home runs coming into this event and was one of those guys who had not even hit a home run since late June. Wasn't even really on a power surge over the last couple of games of the season, but he was still able to hit his stride here today in order to find a way, in order to outdo the rest of the pack and hit those six home runs and come away with the title win here for Marty Bikina today. So the South Division has won their first ever meeting here in the Home Run Derby back here in Kenosha. The first time that the Kingfish are hosting the All-Star Game festivities with the South Division winning today. We'll see if the South Division is able to repeat tomorrow here in the All-Star Game. That'll be at Simmons Field that evening. That's going to do it here for the Northwoods League Network. I'm Robert Sherman. We hope you enjoyed the most unique Home Run Derby you may ever see, and we hope to see you tomorrow back at Simmons Field for the Home Run Derby. From all five producers here at the Northwoods League Network, we say good night, see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody.